Christian Lighthouse Church. You know, the Bible says that we are to put the things of God first. And everything will, shall be added unto you. Amen. So when you make time for God, when you put God first in your life, everything will fall into place. Amen. So we're here to worship who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeshua. Amen. We're here to praise the mighty name of Jesus. That's what we're here for. You know, we can celebrate. We can get excited about sports. We can get excited about many other things. But we should be more excited when it comes to God. Amen. Amen. Don't be embarrassed to shout his name. Don't be embarrassed to uh, proclaim his name. Amen. So uh, welcome. And uh, as we prepare for our praise and worship, so it's the way that we, uh, we surrender all of our being to God. Amen. That we surrender everything that we're going through to God. You might be facing sickness. You might be facing troubles. You might be facing uh, troubles at work or in your relationship. Whatever it is, just surrender it to God. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, Lord. We ask that you come into our heart. We invite your Holy Spirit in this place. We ask that you lead in everything that is said and done. And that the words that I preach and the words that our daughter will be singing here in a minute will be to glorify you, Lord. Give us the words, come into our hearts. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, and heal us from any sickness, Lord. And guide us, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I know uh, Brother Martin wanted these songs back. He enjoys these songs very much. So we had to bring them back. But if you guys have any ideas of any songs that you would like to have during praise and worship, get with me or my wife, and we'll put them into consideration, all right? Amen. Um, right now, we're going to go ahead and collect uh, tithes and offerings. If Vanessa, if you could pass, or can I have two of the, of the young, of the kids back there? If they can pass the tray around as we collect uh, tithes and offerings. I'll have one of you come on this side and one of you go on this side, all right? I'm going to make a few announcements as they collect the tithes and offerings. Next Saturday, this Saturday coming up, we're going to have a revival. All right? We're going to have this uh, preacher named Noel Diaz coming from Hereford, Texas. And he's going to be doing the service next Saturday. So we want to welcome them here. We want to, you know, we want to welcome them as family. Amen? And as they come and minister before us, and they're gonna be, they're gonna have a band here. They're gonna be playing the drums. They're gonna be playing the guitar, and they're gonna do a little bit of tejano. They're gonna do a little bit of uh, praise and worship music, and you know it's all gonna be Christian music. You know it's all to glorify God. So you guys don't want to miss it. This is this Saturday coming up. All right, same time at 11 a.m. and it's gonna be a uh, Pastor Noel Diaz. He's going to be here with us. Um, you know, he is from a different belief. But we are to encourage each other, right? Yes. We are to support each other and we are to um, help each other. And uh, I know that God is going to use them in a mighty way. So when he comes here next Saturday, we want to welcome them as family and give them a big hug. Amen? Yes. Amen. So that's one of the announcements. In July, we're going to have uh, another concert. And it's going to be a Christian rock group. So we try to do a little bit of everything here. Um, but that's going to be announced later on in July. But this next Saturday, it'll be uh, Brother uh, Pastor Noel Diaz and his uh, team. They'll be here this next Saturday. So you guys don't want to miss that. Invite friends, invite family. And we'll be here with them. All right. Those are the announcements here at the, right before church starts. We do have Children's Church downstairs. And my lovely wife and my daughter Vanessa, they, they, uh, they conduct. I'm thinking about that. She's yeah, excited about the children's church. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Go yes. Yeah. All right. As we uh, pray for the offering and the tithes, um, did you want to pray? Yes. Please, Lord, bless, bless this money and the offerings that people have gave us. 
and bless these people that are here in church and throughout the worldwide and for everyone who has gone through things. In Jesus' name, please bless us with a lot of food and healthy stuff so we can have a good rest of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I might just let him preach. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What time is it? It's children's story. Amen. So we can have all the children come up here in the front row. We're going to have a children's story. Vanessa, I don't know if you want to uh, move all these. Uh... All right. We got quite a bit of children today. All glory to God. Y'all know the story of Cain and Abel. I do. You do? <laughs> yes. Yes, Adam and Eve's sons. Man, they're on it. They're on it. Amen. You seen the movie? All right. The super book. All right. Amen. So the story of Cain and Abel, that's what we're going to be talking about, okay? Adam and Eve had two sons that were named Cain and Abel. After uh, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they were kicked out of the garden. Yeah. Yeah, for disobedience, yeah. right? Yeah, yes. Because they ate the food that God The forbidden ate. fruit, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. He's always on it. He's always on it. And so they were kicked out of the garden, and now they had Adam, I mean, they had uh, Cain and Abel. They had two sons. And these two sons, uh, one of them was a tiller of the ground, right? Yes. And then the other one was a shepherd. a shepherd, yes. And so God, you know, and we we were they were to bring an offering to God, amen. They were to bring an offering to God, and they were to. But when God asks us to do something a certain way, He expects us to do it a certain way, right? You know, it's kind of like when your parents ask you to do something, but you decided to do it different than what they told you to. You know, we are to do it well how they tell us, right? Yeah. Last time my mom uh, got, got mad at me because I, I didn't get <laughs> Oh, she got mad at you because you didn't listen. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, see, what well, God was asking them, was asking his people to bring an offering to him. And Cain and Abel responded and said, we will, right? So Cain brought an offering of fruits and vegetables because it looks prettier, it looks nicer, and he brought it to God. Abel brought an offering of a, of a, of a lamb, a, burnt, a sacrifice of a lamb. That's bloody and kind of yucky, right? I mean, who wants to do that, right? But did you know that that's what God asked for them to do, is to bring an offering of a sacrifice of a lamb. So when God says for us to do something a certain way, we are to listen, right? Even if it doesn't make sense. A lot of things don't make sense. You know, when God asks us to do certain things, sometimes they don't make sense to us. But God has his reasons why he's asking us to do something a certain way, right? So who do you think, God's, uh, who, who do you think God accepted their sacrifice? Was it Abel or Cain? He accepted Abel's uh, sacrifice because he brought a lamb and it was sac he sacrificed a lamb before the Lord. Amen. Um, he rejected Cain's offering of fruits and vegetables. And Cain got very upset. He got very upset. Guess what he did? He killed his brother. He killed his brother. Yes. He got jealous. He got jealous that God accepted his offering and not his. You know, but when we make mistakes in life, should we get angry and get mad and do something bad? No. We just, we need to go to God and ask God for forgiveness and say, I'll listen this time, right? We got to tell our parents, I'll listen this time, amen? So that's all Cain needed to do. All he needed to do was ask for forgiveness and do it right the next time, right? But he didn't. 
he disobeyed and he went and killed his brother out of jealousy. You know, jealousy and anger and all those things are bad, right? We don't want one of those, none of those things. So the story here is we are to obey when our parents tell us something or when our teachers tell us something or somebody that's older than us. We, need, we are to listen to what advice they have for us, okay? And let's not try to do it our way, but rather how they're asking us to do it, okay? So that's the story of Cain and Abel. All right, let's come up here and let's pray together. All right. You're ready to pray, right? <laughs> All right, here you go. Let's hold hands. Just don't put it right to your mouth. Just put it right there, okay? Right there. Go ahead. I have a look at the at my house. God, thanks for the day. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Y'all may be seated. Y'all may be seated. Here in a minute, we'll be having Children's Church, so y'all just hold on tight. At this time, we're going to have Vanessa do a special music for us. And Brother Richard is singing that song because uh, the message today is going to be about Father's Day. And I told her I love that song very much. I said, I will. I'll sing it for you guys. <laughs> but she sings it to God. Amen. Most importantly, she sings it to God. To glorify the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The message of my sermon today is called... Abba, Father, let us pray. Heavenly Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, we just ask that you help us to empty ourselves and to receive you. Lord, uh, use me and give me the words to preach. Give me the words to say, Lord. Let it be from you, your words and what you want for us. Just be with us. We invite your presence here, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I get excited. I'm so excited to come to church every Sabbath. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of people say, well, why do you have church on Sabbath? Well, there is the Ten Commandments, right? We have the Ten Commandments. The Fourth Commandment says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And that's why we're here. The Sabbath is a memorial of His creation. Amen. Amen. So if we want to acknowledge who the true Creator is, we keep the Sabbath holy. At this time, my wife's going to call the children to go downstairs for the um, children's church. I'm sorry, I forgot to make that announcement. All right, if y'all want to follow them to children's church. I got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> Amen. All right. When we keep the Sabbath holy, we are saying you are a true creator. Amen? You know, that throws evolution out the window, right? When we say, I want to keep your day holy, we are saying you are a creator. You are the true God. Amen? We don't have time for evolution. You know, that's what is being shown to our kids in the schools. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. That we've been here for billions of billions of years. And that we came from a Big Bang Theory or a big explosion. That's a lie. That's a lie from Satan. But God says the Sabbath is a memorial of creation. You know, in Genesis chapter 2, it tells us that the Sabbath is a memorial of creation. Amen. This is before the Ten Commandments were even given to us. The Sabbath is mentioned at, at creation. The Sabbath is also mentioned when we, we go to heaven, for, you know, to be in heaven with God. So we will keep the Sabbath even in heaven and on the new earth. Amen? So uh, that's why we, he we meet here on the Sabbath. You know, um, the Bible says that we're a peculiar people, right? We're going to be different. We're going to look different. But that's what we... That's what we want people to see Jesus in us. Amen? We want people to see God in us. Amen? So we can lead them to God. Not ourselves, not to lift ourselves up, 
but to glorify God. Amen? It was like, why is that brother so different? Why is that sister so different? Why is there so much love in that person? Why is that person so caring, right? Do they see that in you? Amen? If they don't, I ask that you, you get in a deep relationship with God. Amen? The message is called Abba Father. Tomorrow is Father's Day. Some of you here might not celebrate Father's Day, but for those that do, you know, tomorrow is Father's Day. It's an important day, right? You know, we have Mother's Day, but we also have Father's Day. For some, we have, a lot of us have memories of our father, right? For some of you, you might have good memories of your father. And for some of you, you might have bad memories of your father, right? For others, maybe your dad has passed away already. And then for others, you might have had an uncle or a grandpa raise you as your father, right? Let me give you a short testimony about my father, about my dad. I was raised in Juarez, Mexico. And uh, we were very poor. We lived in a adobe house. The floor was made out of dirt. We had the bathroom outside. It was a, literally a hole dug in the ground with a little wooden house over it. That was our bathroom. We, uh, yeah, we would put the, wa the water hose over. Well, we would actually fill up this tin of water to take baths. And we would take baths very, right, not, not every day because of the circumstances. Sometimes it'd be every other day or every third day. But that's how we lived. They, we had electricity, but it was regulated. At a certain time of the day, they would shut it off. It was, it was different. That's how we were raised, me and my sister, me and my, my younger sister. I have, two, I have another sister and I have another brother as well. So that makes four of us. But it's me and my other sister that we were raised in Mexico. My dad was from Mexico, but my mom was from here, from the United States. But my mom loved my, my dad so much that she was willing to live in Mexico. So when my mom was pregnant of me, she came over here in the United States to have me, and then we moved back. And then she did the same thing with my sister. So we would be American citizens. So we lived in Mexico, it was pretty rough. It was pretty crazy. P poverty, we ate beans and rice every day. We ate meat very regularly, re uh, very rarely, maybe on the weekends. We didn't have a refrigerator, we had a ice box. The ice person would pass by on a truck with blocks of ice and we would buy ice from him and we would put it in the ice box. And that's how we would keep our food cool for the day. So we had to, we, that's what we were used to. That's how we were raised. Amen? That's how we were raised. I loved my dad a lot. I loved him. I still love him. My dad, uh, yeah, he had his problems. He was an, an alcoholic. Um, he struggled with uh, anger. He had a lot of anger in his life. But he loved my mom very much. He loved us very much. He would keep us up at night listening to Spanish music, Mexican music. Late at night, like at 12 or 1 in the morning, just we were all laying there on the bed and listening to music. And he'd be explaining to us and telling us about the music. I still have those memories, right? I remember even though I was young. And uh, he would, he liked to talk a lot. I guess that's why I like to talk a lot. <laughs> he used to like to talk a lot. He would keep my mom up. My mom was ready to go to sleep and she, he would keep her up. Just keep talking to her and keep talking to her. And um, we were back and forth. You know, my dad would come over here illegally. He would sneak, sneak over the border. He would come over here because he wanted to give us a better life. 
He wanted to give he wanted to give us a better life so we would live here in Amarillo for a year or two until the immigration would be called on him and they would send them back. So there we go back to live in Mexico. So we were back and forth, back and forth. But most of our time we were living in Mexico. And then one of the times we came over here to Amarillo and we were here maybe a few months and he got a cough that his brother died. And my dad's brother died, which was my uncle. And that was my dad's closest brother to him. And he said, I, I have to go. I have to go see him. Even if we can't get back to the United States, I, I need to go see him. So we went. We went. And we went to Mexico, and we were there, the funeral and everything. And, um, you know, my dad broke down. That was his closest brother. He passed away. And um, so the funeral was over. The service was over. And then, uh, uh, I believe, a day later or two days later, I'm like, all right. I remember my dad coming and talking to my mom my sister and myself and said my dad said I'm tired he goes I'm tired because I'm tired of going to the United States and getting sent back it's a rough life what if you guys what do you guys think if we just stay here in Mexico and live here in Mexico and my mom I don't know how to say this my mom said talk to one or, you know, me, myself, and see what he wants us to do. And my dad said, uh, Juan, what do you want to do? What do you want us to do? I said, Dad, I don't want to live here in Mexico. I want us to go back to the United States. My dad said, okay. And, um, so my dad uh, with two other people, since they were illegal, they decided to come in a different car. And we came in a separate car because we were American. So we came, we were there in Favens, Texas. And then my dad and, and the other two people showed up. They said, we made it. We made it across the border. We just told them we were American citizens and we crossed. So we met them there in Favens, Texas. They said, now we got to go around... Um, what's it called, the uh, checkpoint. Now we gotta go around checkpoint, but for us to do that, we have to drive around two states, called uh, New Mexico, back that way, all the way around New Mexico. I can't, I don't remember what's the next state next to that. Yeah. Nevada? Somewhere around there, it was in the mountains. I just know it was in the mountains. Yeah. <clears throat> So we decided to take off, we're driving, we're heading to, to Amarillo, and this was at, at night. I remember seeing my dad, he gave us a, a kiss and a hug. And uh, so, you know, my dad, he gave us a goodbye, kiss, I love you guys. And uh, so they took off, and they were supposed to go all the way around the mountains. And then we were just to drive straight over here. And we're driving over here. I was a kid. I was about 10 years old. My sister was nine years old. And my dad, you know, and his two friends were driving around the checkpoint. And we're driving and we're listening to the Spanish radio station. This is in the middle of the night. And then um, the, the, the radio station gets interrupted. And it said there's been a there's been a bad accident. There's been a bad accident and uh, two cars collided and they caught on fire. And uh, my mom said, I'm pretty sure that's, that's my husband. So we drove over there. It took us a couple of hours to get over there. And sure enough, it was my dad. So we went.
him back and buried him next to his brother. We buried him next to his brother. After that, I was angry at God. I hated God. I hated God because he had took in my dad. Amen. So we came here to Amarillo as a teenager. You know, we came here to Amarillo and th this was a different world to me. Everything was different. I wasn't used to the way things are here, right? Me and my sister, my mom got into alcohol heavily. She was depressed. I was angry at God. Around age 12, 13, I was running the streets here in Amarillo. Getting into everything you can imagine. Doing drugs, getting drunk, sleeping around with multiple women. I hated God. I was mad at God. All the way until probably age 18, 19. My sister is the same thing. And not to, and to top it off, when me and my sister got here in the United States around age 12, me and my sister were molested by a close family member. So we went through a lot of things. You can't tell me whatever you're going through that God cannot turn your life around. Amen. Amen. I was angry at God because he had taken my dad. I didn't want nothing to do with God. I was around age 19. Me and a friend of mine were walking over there off of Nelson Street. Close to Grant Street. We're walking past this uh, uh, firefighter station. And this firefighter comes out. He goes directly to me. And I don't remember exactly what he told me, but something like this. He said, Son, did you know that God loves you? I go, I don't know what you're talking about. I started cursing him out, showing off for my friends. He goes, you can curse me out, you can do whatever you want, but I'm here to tell you that God loves you very much and he has a purpose for you in your life. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know why you have so much anger in your life, but God loves you. I cursed him out and I went my way. I was around 19 years old. And me and my friend, we, you know, we continue to party, continue to do our own thing. But that night, I went to bed thinking about that, what he had said. He had planted a seed in me. Amen? Amen. So don't ever stop preaching the gospel. Don't ever stop sharing the gospel with somebody. Amen? Share the love of God with a broken hearted. Share the love of God with every single person you come across. You don't know that you're planting a seed in that person. Amen? So that seed was planted in me. And I, uh, I started to think, does God really love me? If he loves me, why did he take my dad? Right? Why does God allow bad things to happen to people? Right? Why do people die from cancer and all these sicknesses? Right? Why does God allow those things to happen? But the more I thought about it, the more I, I was hungry for God's word. I was hungry to know who God was. Amen? And so I started to share with my friends. and like, what if we go to church? He jumped out of the seat. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so what are you talking about? Church. I go, yes. He goes, no, nah, that's not for me. So I started to go to church on my own. I didn't know what church to go to. I was raised Catholic. I didn't know what church to go to, so I just started going to different churches. I started going to the Assemblies of God. I started going to Pentecostal. I even studied with Jehovah Witnesses. I studied a little bit with Messianic Jewish. With Baptists. And then I finally ended up in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But I was there. Back then, I had long hair to right here. 
I had black eyeliner. I was into the heavy metal scene. I was a low rider, but into the heavy metal scene. I don't know if that makes sense to you. <laughs> I wish I could find old pictures of that so I could show you guys. But when I went into the, the church, you can imagine how everyone looked at me, right? Nobody shook my hand. Nobody welcomed me in. I sat at the very back. And um, people would have screwed up because they didn't want to be set close to me. And it's not just in the Seventh-day Adventist church. It happened in other churches as well. Yes. So when we see somebody coming in here that looks different or that comes from the streets or whatever they look like, we are to show them love. Amen. Amen. We are to be there for people. I got discouraged and I stopped going to church. I said, if this is what it is to go to church, I don't want to go to church. I thought the love of God was in these people. Where is the love in these people? Amen. I was rejected. I was cast to the side. I'm sure some of you might have similar testimonies. But I still had God in my heart. I was still seeking. I was still wanting to know about who God was. Amen. Because I know that seed was planted in my life. And I just began to study God's word. I began to study God's word on my own. At the same time, I was partying. I was still getting high. I was still getting drunk. But God was working in my life. God was saying, I want to make a brand new you. I want to restore you like a 64 Impala into a new Impala, right? I want to restore you like an old car into a new car, right? I want to give you new life. Amen? I didn't understand it at the time. I had anger problems, just like my dad. I had alcohol problems, just like my dad. You know that there's generational curses that are passed down to us. But it's up to you to say, I'm, you know, God, break that chain. Break those shackles, break that chain of those generational curses. I might have an anger problem. I don't want that no more. I surrender it to you, God. Amen. I might have an alcoholic problem. I don't want it no more. I surrender it to you, God. Amen. I might have a smoking problem. I surrender it to you, God. I know there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many of y'all doubt that? Nobody, right? There's power in the name of Jesus. To make the story, the story short, I, I went back and forth with God. I went back and forth. I would be in church. I'd be out of church. But, you know, I, I, there's, it's a long history. I don't have time to tell you my whole, my whole story. But I came to understand that I have a Heavenly Father. Yes. Amen? Yes. That we all have a Heavenly Father. Some of you, maybe your father has let you down. Maybe your father has hurt you. Amen? Maybe your father has abandoned you. And for some others, maybe your father has passed away. Right? But we all have our Heavenly Father that loves you unconditionally. Right? He loves you very much. And He's going to be there for you no matter what. No matter what you look like. No matter what race you are, no matter what your background is, right? Is the background you or the person standing you? The person standing is you, right? God wants to make, be, make you a new creation. Amen? So we have Abba Father. We have our Heavenly Father. Let's go to the Bible. Romans chapter 8. We are to go to the Word of God because there is power in the Word of God. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. We need God's Word. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, 14 through 16. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear 
But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Amen? When we surrender ourselves to God, we are adopted into the family of God. We're family here, right? That's why we call each other brothers and sisters in the Lord. When you surrender your life to God, you become part of the family of God. You're my brother and you're my sister in God. Amen? It says that we're adopted. You know, some of you might be adopted. You know, maybe uh, you have stepdads. Maybe you were raised by your uncle, your grandpa, or whatever it is, right? Here on earth, that might be your earthly dad or your earthly father, right? But we have our Heavenly Father. He adopts us. He goes, I don't care what you look like. I don't care if you have money or you're poor. Come into the family. Amen? Come feast with me. He wants to have a great dinner with us. Amen? The Bible says that there's a dinner invitation in heaven. And that we're all going to be, taking, be able to take partake of that dinner. We're all going to be able to sit at that table with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It don't matter if you're white, Mexican, black. It doesn't matter if you're a cholo or from the streets. It doesn't matter if you're a cowboy or for whatever, right? From the country. It doesn't matter. God is inviting all of us to that dinner invitation. Amen. Amen. He wants to adopt all of us. And here it says, Abba, Father. Check this out. What's in the middle of the word Sabbath? Abba. Have you ever thought about that? In the middle of the word Sabbath is Abba. He has a signature upon the Sabbath. Even if our fathers have died, even if your father wasn't there for you or you have been hurt by him, are you hurting today? Have you gone through some things? Let God be your healer. Amen? He will heal you just like He did heal me. You know, I was angry at God. God didn't take my father away. Things happen, right? We're all going to die one time or another, right? Do we have a relationship with God? Because we know one day we either go to heaven or we'll be cast into the lake of fire, right? I wish I could say we're all going to heaven. It's not so. The Bible says there's two places. There's going to be two places, right? We know there's heaven right now, but then there will be the lake of fire after the thousand years, right? No, after, yes, after the thousand years. And those that are lost will be cast into the lake of fire. Do you have a relationship with God? You might say, well, I have a lot of things to work on myself. Come as you are to Jesus. You're never going to re reach perfection. Don't wait to be perfect to come to God. He will perfect you along the way. All you got to do is surrender yourself to Him. Today is a day of salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. Amen? Tomorrow, we don't know what could happen. With everything that's going on around us, did you know there's, there's been two shootings this last week here in Amarillo? Two shootings here in Amarillo this last week. We don't know what could happen. Do you, are you sealed? Do you have a relationship with God right now? Have you surrendered yourself completely to God? Amen? All right. I'm going to tell you a little bit step for, uh, step further. Has the role of a father been trampled down? Not just as a father, but as a man. You know, we live in a... You know, in the 70s, you had the women's movement, right? Did you know it's prophesied in the Bible that there'll be a woman riding a beast in the book of Revelation? We know, we know that's the church, the false church controlling the government, right? Yes. Controlling Rome. But it has a double prophetic meaning. Did you know that? 
that in the last days women would be ruling the world. The Bible says, women, be submissive unto your husbands, just as the husband is submissive unto God. Amen? The role of a man has been stepped down on. The role of a man has been ridiculed and made fun of, not respected. Right? What happened when Eve decided to be independent? What happened? If she would have stayed along with her husband... But she decided to be independent. I know this might offend some of you guys watching or listening here today. But that's the umbrella of how God has His order. His God, the husband, the wife, the children. Amen. You know what this society has done? Has flipped it upside down. The children are in charge. And then the wife's in charge. And then the husband is last. And then God's even last. Yes. This society has flipped it around. We need to follow the order of what God has for us. Of course, the Bible says that a woman is to be submissive to a godly man. Not just to any man. If this man is not a, God, a man of God, if he, if he beats you, if he cheats on you, if he does all these things, you are not to be submissive out to him. You are to be submissive unto a man of God. Amen. Yes. That's why it's wise for us to, 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 uh, to check the fruits and see you know, when we're dating. Amen. But the role of a father has been trampled. The role of a father or what, to be, what it means to be a man has been thrown to the ground. Amen. You know, a lot of times, none of us want to be told what to do, right? I know that I don't like being told what to do. But we all need to humble ourselves. Yeah. Yes. It requires for us to be humble and simple. It's hard for us men to be humble sometimes. We're, we're prideful sometimes, right? We walk around with our, like, I'm the man. I'm the boss here. You're not going to tell me what to do. Is that a man of God? No. We are to be humble. I am to come before God and say, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Am I leading my family in the ways of God? Did I speak to somebody in a negative way? Was I mean to somebody? Did I offend somebody? Did I hurt someone? Lord, help me to be a humble person. And a lot of times those men don't want to be humble because we'll be made fun of around other men. At work or around family. It's like, what's wrong with you? i like, I'd rather serve God than to please man. Amen? We are to please God before men. Amen? So let us be humble. Let us be men of God. Men, rise up. Stand up for God. When you're hanging around with your guy friends and they're telling dirty jokes, rise up and stand up for God. The Bible says that if you deny me, I will deny you before, the, before the God the Father. When he comes, and you say, oh, Lord, I'm ready to go with you. He's going to say, I don't know you. God's going to say, I don't know you. You denied me. So I'm denying you. That's what the word of God says. So when you're around other guys and they're talking about, they're talking about dirty jokes and talking ugliness and foolishness, stand up for God and say, I'm not that person. I'm sorry, brother. I don't find that funny. They're, they might make fun of you, but are you willing to stand up for God? Amen? Are you willing to make the right choices and stand up for God? Don't deny God. Don't deny God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. All the way to verse 31. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it, cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and his flesh and of his bones. And then it continues. For this reason... 
man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. We all know that God is the head of the husband, right? Man, allow God to lead you. Don't lead yourself. Don't lead in your own ways. Allow God to lead you. Tomorrow is Father's Day. But not just Father's Day. Be a man of God. I'm challenging you. All men that are watching. All young, guy, uh, all young men that are watching. Stand up for God. And allow God to lead you. Amen. When you allow God to lead you. You'll be able to lead your family. If you don't allow God to lead you. You won't be able to lead your, your family. The way God wants you to. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. And you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath. But bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Right? The ways of the Lord. What examples are we setting before our children? Amen? A lot of times I remember my dad used to tell me, Don't smoke. But he would be smoking himself. <laughs> or don't curse. But he'd be cursing himself. Right? What example are we setting before our children? Right? A lot, of, a lot of the times our children learn by example more than what we tell them to do. Don't provoke our children to the evil ways. Amen? What video games are you playing at home? Uh-oh, I might have touched somebody's feeling, uh, nerves here. What video games are you playing at home in front of your children? Man, I can't believe the video games they have these days. It's worse than mo the movies. I prefer them to watch a movie. <laughs> what example are you setting before your children? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you doing? How are you talking to your wife? How are you talking to your children? How are you talking to the strangers? How are you talking and uh, responding to the elderly? Right? They watch that. They see that. Let us be an example for our children. Amen? Psalms 112. Check it out. Psalms 112. So about in the middle of the Bible. Psalms 112, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Praise is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Who delights in his commandments. And to be a, uh, a God-fearing man. Are you a God-fearing man today? The Bible says, blessed is the man that keeps God's commandments. Ten commandments. Does God ask us for much? No. It's obedience. The Ten Commandments, when you have a chance, look them up. Ten Commandments. It's obedience. It's not salvation by works. A lot of people, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians will say, well, you're just trying to save yourself. You're trying to earn salvation. No. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He who says that loves me and does not keep my commandments is a liar. That's what it says in the book of 1 John. So keeping his commandments is obedience. It's like me telling my wife, I love you, but not being obedient to her, disrespecting her, lying to her, cheating on her. I could say I love you all I want, but are my actions showing her that I love her? No. God is asking us to be obedient to his commandments. Are you a man that is obedient to God's commandments today? Right? All Ten Commandments. Because a lot of times, us that we keep the Sabbath holy, we forget there's nine other commandments. You know, we brag about the Sabbath. We talk about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seventh day. It's on Saturday. From Friday sunset till Saturday sunset. 
And yes, that's biblical. It's true. But yet, a lot of us are some of the biggest liars. Right? <laughs> Brother's laughing over here. A lot of us are the biggest liars. There's a commandment that is, thou shalt not lie, right? We brag about the Sabbath. We brag about keeping the fourth commandment. You know, that the Sabbath is on Saturday. You know, we don't work on that on that day. But some of us are adulterers. We look at pornography or we flirt with other people, right? We brag about the Sabbath and that the Sabbath is the, the fourth commandment. And a lot of us are adulterer. How do you say that? Adultery. Adultery. We worship other gods. We worship the gods of sports. We worship the god of uh, money. We worship of idols, right? We make idols out of things. We, we chase after these things. There's ten commandments, brothers and sisters, not just one. But we're only able to keep His commandments through the strength of God. Amen? Not in our own strength. Only in Jesus Christ. With, the, with God, all things are possible. Amen? So don't, don't ever get disappointed if you fail at one time or another. The Bible says that we all fall, fall short of the glory of God, right? That we're all sinners. No one's perfect here. We're all sinners, right? So we are to delight in His commandments. We are to be joyful, be obedient to God. Generation after generation, we will be blessed. Break those generational curses, like I said before. Break those generational curses and say and ask God, I don't want to be this person that I've always been. Remove this hate from me. Yeah. Remove this anger from me. Remove this jealousy from me. Right? Yeah. Help me to be a loving person. Help me to show the love of God to everyone around me. Amen? How many of y'all know the story of the prodigal son? Right? The prodigal son. It's in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, I believe. It says that... Uh, Luke 15. Luke? Luke chapter 15. Thanks for correcting, brother. It says that the prodigal son, he told his father, I want my inheritance. I want my money, what belongs to me. I want it now, and I want to leave the house. You know, a lot of times when we're teenagers, we think we know everything, right? He said, I want what belongs to me, and I want to go live my own life. The father begged him to stay. But he granted his what he wanted to do, right? So the prodigal son leaves his father's house. He has a brother at home. So he leaves his father and his mother and his brother at home. He takes off. He goes lives his life. He goes lives his life and does all this evil living. The Bible says that he was with prostitutes. He says that he partied. It said he had a lot of friends because he had money. A lot of times, if you have a lot of money, you have a lot of friends, right? When that money's gone, where's your friends? <laughs> but uh, he, he was having a great time. He was living it up, right? But we all know that money runs out. Money's gone. All his money's gone. And now he's desiring to work. There was a famine in the land, and he's wanting to work because he don't, he's hungry now. He don't have nothing. He lost it all. He gambled it all. The Bible says that he gambled it all. We got to be careful when it comes to gambling. Right? So he lost it all. Now he's dirt poor. Right? And he's begging for work. And he sees this guy that has pigs and he says, I'll work for you. He's working for that man. When his father back home is a king. When his father back home has all the riches. He owns all kinds of land. He, his father even has workers, servants. And yet the son is out here living poor and miserable. Right? 
and he's feeding the pigs, and he's so hungry that he desires to eat what the pigs are eating. That's how low he came to be. And he said, he said to God, God, I have, I have disobeyed you. Forgive me. He repented. He repented of his ways, and he asked God, forgive me. And he said, I'll go back to my father, and uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll at least hire me as one of his servants. You see how he was being humble about it. He didn't say, I'm going to go back to my father, and he's going to put me back on the, on the spot, right? When we ask for forgiveness to God, we are to come humbly. We are to, it's, it's to be meaningful, right? We don't just say, God, forgive me, and just keep doing our own thing. It has to come from your heart. It has to be genuine. It has to be real. So he asked God the Father, he said, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and I have sinned against my Father here on earth. I will go back to my Father, and I'm sure he'll hire me as one of his workers. So he did. He took off. He went back to his Father. And the Father, every evening, would go outside and hoping his son would be coming back. Did you know that's what God does with us? When we're out here lost, when we're out here doing our own thing, God is waiting for you. He's waiting with open arms for you to come back. Amen? He's waiting for you. We, uh, God does not leave us. We live Him. Right? So the Bible says, as the son was, the prodigal son was coming, the father sees him from far away. The Bible says that the father runs to him and meets him halfway, right? When we repent and we ask God for forgiveness, we are to go to the father. But God the father is humble enough to come to us as well. That's how much he loves you, amen? So he came to meet his son Gave him a big hug, put a ring on his finger, bling bling, <laughs> put a ring on his finger. He said, go buy him a nice robe, go buy him some nice Jordans and put them on his shoes. We're going to have a party tonight, right? Bring the mariachi band up and go kill, go kill the cow and let's have some carnes, right? Carne asada. That's what the Bible says. Except the part about the Jordans. <laughs> but uh, so that's what happened. They decided to have a party. The father throws a party for his son. There's dancing and singing and celebration. Amen. And uh, his brother, the, the son that came back, his brother got jealous. And went to the father and said, Father, I have been serving you all my life. And your son, instead of saying my brother, he says, your son, he goes, he went in and had parties with prostitutes, and yet you're going to throw a party for him? He goes, you never even, set, uh, even uh, killed a goat for me, but you're going to go and kill a cow for him and, and have a celebration? What about me? And God says, you know, uh, the father says, You've been with me all the time. My son was lost, but now he's found. Amen? So let us not be jealous for people that have left the church or people that are lost in the world. Right? If you've been serving God all these years, hallelujah, right? Praise God. Let us not be jealous of anybody that's out there lost in the world. We are to celebrate with them. Amen? And this is a parable this is a parable of the father and the prodigal son about how our heavenly father loves you so much and we're the prodigal son. We're lost out here. Amen? We need God the father. He's going to put a ring on you. He's going to do a feast celebration for you. He's going to do a party for you. When you give your life to God, when you're baptized in the waters of submersion, in the waters of baptism, there's a big party and celebration up in heaven. Amen? All the angels are celebrating and excited for you. Amen? God the Father loves you very much. 
God the Father loves you very much. Are we ready to accept him? Let's read our final Bible verse. The book of Micah. The book of Micah chapter 7. Verse 18 and 19. Who is a God like you? Micah chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. God is a merciful God. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that when our sins are forgiven, they're cast into the bottom of the ocean. Amen? The, the scientists will tell us today that you cannot go to the bottom of the ocean. There's parts of the ocean that no man has ever gone to because of the pressure people would die. Your sins are at the bottom of that ocean. You can never... So why do we remember our sins? If God has forgiven them, if God has forgotten them, why do we remember them? Amen? If you ask God to forgive you, He has cleansed you. You have new life in Him. Amen? Amen. With all this said, God the Father loves you very much. As we honor our, our earthly fathers tomorrow on Father's Day, let us not forget the most important father, and that is Abba Father. He loves you very much. No matter how dark your past is, no matter what you've done, the Bible says that he forgave people that uh, cheated on their, on their wife. The Bible says that God forgave David that stole somebody else's wife. The Bible says he forgave a murderer, right? God transformed many lives, and God can transform your life here today. Amen? Let us stand as we pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we just want to give you praise, Lord. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we don't deserve it, Lord. You said that by... The blood, covered by the blood of Jesus that we're saved in. Lord, we ask that you come into our heart, Lord, and remove any pain, any hurt, any sickness, Lord. We just ask that you be with everyone here today, Lord, and everyone that is watching online, Lord. Lord, be with everyone as we celebrate Father's Day tomorrow. Let us celebrate you, Father, for being our Father and for loving us unconditionally. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. This concludes our service and uh, we are here every Saturday at 11 a.m. and we will see you guys next Saturday. Remember, we will have Pastor Noel Diaz and his ministry group as they will be uh, presenting this service. So God bless you. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you for viewing our videos. Hope this was for you and yours. Um, hopefully, please to like and subscribe to our videos and everything we have, every platform we have. Thank you. God bless.